Aloha everyone. So after I released a video a couple weeks ago talking about why I bought a vacation rental condo on Oahu, I've been getting a lot of questions from people asking why I chose the island and the property that I did. In fact, ever since we lost Lahaina to the fire, a lot of people who would have previously only considered vacationing or owning property on Maui are now interested in what the other islands have to offer as well. Look, Maui will always be my home and my favorite island, but there's a lot to like about each of the Hawaiian islands, and there are pros and cons to each. In this video, I'm going to share some of the tools that I use to find my personal vacation rental properties in Hawaii, regardless of what island they're on. We're going to talk about the best ways to browse the current listings, only the ones that are in the correct zoning to allow short-term rentals. I'll share some of the additional filters that I think are important and I'll show you one of the ways I determine which properties have the best rental income potential. But before we get started, I think it's important to remind everyone that short-term rentals in residential neighborhoods have come under criticism lately. And that's why I focus my searches on properties that are only in resort or commercial areas. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Let's jump right into it. So the first helpful tool that I use to browse only the current listings that allow short-term rentals on any island is actually one that I created myself. My website has pages dedicated to short-term rentals on Maui, Oahu, Kauai, and the Big Island. You're going to find these pages under the drop-down navigation menu for each island. Now, this might not sound like that big a deal to people that are not familiar with short-term rental laws in Hawaii, but it's important to remember that each island does have its own rules when it comes to where short-term rentals are allowed. So these filters do require a lot of custom work. The big national real estate websites like Zillow, Trulia, and Redfin are not equipped to filter out the properties that don't allow vacation rentals. And this can make it confusing for people who are searching for properties only for the properties that offer the flexibility that short-term rentals do. It was actually even confusing for me, a real estate professional, when I was looking at other islands until I created these pages to help filter out the properties that didn't fit my criteria. I'm going to share links to each of these pages in the description below. Now, in addition to the short-term rental pages I just showed you, I also built pages for each island that use additional filters that are important to me when I'm shopping for my own personal real estate. You'll find links to these at the top of each of the corresponding island's short-term rental page. On Oahu, Kauai, and the Big Island, the added filter simply removes the leasehold properties from the list. On Maui, the custom filter takes out all the short-term rentals that are in apartment zoning, which means they could lose their ability to vacation rent, and it filters out the leasehold properties as well. This leaves you with only the short-term rental properties for sale that I would recommend to people who want to make sure that they'll continue to have the ability to vacation rent into the future. Of course, you'll still need to do your own due diligence on all of the short-term rental rules for the properties on these pages as some of these complexes are in mixed-use zoning and will have certain units in that complex that do allow STRs and some that do not. It's always important to confirm with a qualified real estate professional or directly with the counties. Okay, now let's talk about the second tool I use as a starting point to help me determine what these properties rental income potential is. It's a website called BNB Calc and you'll find a link to the tool towards the bottom of all of the STR pages. I'll also share a link in the description below. Now, as stated on my website, the most accurate way to, to calculate income versus expenses is to contact me and my team directly, but I do understand that some people are still in the research phase of their search and not ready to talk to a broker. That's where this website can be a helpful tool to do some quick preliminary research. And a lot of times I actually use BNB Calc myself for my initial research. Let me show you a few quick examples of how this works. So what I found is the easiest way to do research efficiently 
is to open BNB Calc in a separate window and then move the BNB Calc window right beside the real estate website you're using to shop for short term rentals. Of course, in this case, it's my website, hirealestateexperts.com. Now that that's set up, when you find a property that you're interested in, and in this case, we'll use a one bedroom at Kihei Ali'i Kai that's listed for a million dollars as our example. All you have to do is either copy and paste the property address or you can click on the property to go to the property details page and copy and paste the link to that property into BNB Calc. Once the property is entered, you input the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and the maximum number of guests allowed along with the estimated purchase price. Now when you hit calculate, the system will ask you for your information, but there is a seven day free trial to test it out. I'm already a paying subscriber, so it sends me right to the rental income information. As you can see, BNB Calc estimates that this property will gross just over $60,000 per year in rental income. You can also click on the data breakdown link and it shows you how it arrived at that number. The system actually pulls data from two other popular sites, AirDNA and AirBidX. Now, of course, this system isn't perfect, but I actually just got done getting projections for a very similar property for one of my clients. And we estimated the revenue to be between $60,000 and $70,000 per year. So I can confirm that for this property, BNB Calc was within that range and actually on the conservative side, which is exactly what I would want. And if you want to dig in even deeper, you can scroll down and see a list of all the nearby rental comparables. You can even click on the comparable to be sent directly to the Airbnb page for that property. Here's one in the exact same complex as our example. Now, I personally think that the short-term rental income calculations alone are worth the subscription for someone who is serious about buying a short-term rental property. But if you take the time to fill in some more data, the site also is set up to help you calculate the financial summary, return metrics, estimated long-term rental income, and estimated tax savings. So even if you're looking at properties in other areas outside of Hawaii, I suggest playing around with the free trial to see if it's helpful in your search. I'll share my affiliate link in the description below in case you wanna check it out for yourself. And at the same time, if you use that link, it does help to support this channel. Okay, so those are the tools that I use to help find my personal short-term rental investment properties here in Hawaii. But where is the best place to buy in the market currently? Well, I honestly think the answer is gonna be different for each person depending on their own personal preferences and goals. As you can see, the rental income alone isn't gonna make anyone rich overnight. So these are long-term investments. The rental income is gonna help you cover the carry costs so you can hold the property, potentially use it for your own vacations, have the renters help you pay down the mortgage, you'll be able to take advantage of the tax benefits of investing in real estate, and eventually profit, uh, profit on the property value increasing over time. And while rental income is temporarily down on Maui after the fires of 2023, the rest of the Hawaiian Islands are still going strong. However, I have no doubt that tourism will fully recover on Maui over time. So while it might make sense for some people to explore options on other islands, it's also going to make sense for some people to take advantage of Maui's slower than usual market to land some really good deals. Ultimately, most people buy property on the island that they like the most for their own vacations. But there's also a lot of people out there like me who appreciate what all the Hawaiian Islands have to offer and like the idea of diversifying by owning on multiple islands. There is no one-size-fits-all solution here. It's all about your personal preferences and goals. And of course, if you're getting to the point in your search where 
you'd like to discuss your options with a real estate broker, feel free to reach out to me directly. We're gonna set up a time for a quick consultation, either over the phone or on a video call to see if we'd be a good fit to work together. Or I might have an associate that I can connect you with that's gonna be even better equipped to help you reach your goals. Either way, I promise to point you in the right direction. Don't forget to like the video if you appreciate the helpful information. Subscribe for more real estate updates and share this video with anyone you know who's considering buying real estate in Hawaii so they are also fully informed. That's all I have for you on this video. I hope to see you on the next one. Aloha.